Hello. Can you guys see us? Just post below the video to let me know if you can hear me okay. Hi, Michelle. Okay, so just um, press play on the video. Michelle, maybe, okay. Oh, perfect, I see that you can hear us. Perfect. Great, so I guess you can hear us, see us as well, right? Okay, well, thank you for being here. We're celebrating the launch of the book, Happy Belly. I know a lot of you haven't gotten the book yet. Um, should be shipping to you really, really soon. So those of you who pre-ordered it, you will be getting the book really soon. And today um, is the virtual book launch party. We had a real book launch party in New York last night. We had over 100 guests. Everyone got amazing gift bags, um, got to hang out with the best of the wellness community in New York City. And today I want to create a similar atmosphere on the virtual book launch. So we'll talk a little bit about digestion, um, I'll answer your questions, I'll also get to ask you some questions and in return we'll choose some winners and each one of you will get gift bags. So you have to be live, you have to be present to win the gift bags. And I'll show you throughout the whole call, I'll show you what goes into the gift bag. We have amazing sponsors, so gift bags are literally filled with amazing Happy Belly approved brands. So um, let me know, for you guys to be able to participate in all the contests, you need to um, have had pre-ordered the book. So uh, just in the comments, let me know if you already ordered the book, and if not, to make sure that you order the book throughout the next 90 minutes um, so you can participate and get your gift bag as well. Um, I guess most of you know what the Happy Belly book is about. So I'll instead of talking about the book, I'll tell you a little bit about the presents that I'm going to be giving away and the brands that are participating. So I'll start with one of my favorites. And this is a trifola. So most of the products that I'm going to be giving away today are full-size products. Um, so this is trifola. All of you know it. Uh, it's amazing for your digestion. Then we have reishi mushrooms. And all the products that I'm showing, they are going into one gift bag. Um, so each gift bag will have all of them. There is a sample kit from Juice Beauty. And then there is lemon, ginger, coconut oil, and past life regression CD from Mira Kelly. And then we have Magnetic Warrior Wise Superfood Chocolate from Per Black, amazing brand. Uh, and then we have Shakti Chai, which is uh, filled with um, different herbs, mostly Ayurvedic herbs, that will help to restore your nervous system and feel lots of energy. Um, then we have an essential oil from doTERRA Digest Zen. You can either use it topically or internally. And then we have um, ginger, um, ginger chews, and then per black, so 
Lajit is one of the most amazing things. It's like an Ayurvedic superfood uh, that's good for rejuvenating tissues, staying young, uh, maintaining good energy. And all you need is a pea size. So this jar alone is $80. And um, it's going to be in each bag. And then um, there are more ginger treats. And then there is trifola powder and plant fusion protein. So lots and lots of goodies that I want to give away to you. And we also have green powder from Aloha, which is going to go into gift bags. And there is lip balm from Miri Kelly with frankincense and uh, dandelion. And stir, which is mint cucumber addition to the water. doesn't have any calories, doesn't have any sugar. So it's all Happy Valley approved. And then there is uh, sore throat spray from the same um, company as Ginger Chews. And I think that's pretty much it. So there's, um, there's lots of stuff that I'm excited to give you away. And then in addition, we have some additional brands that are participating. We have Soul Cool Necklaces, which are made with healing stones. And they're giving away three necklaces to people who will guess what kind of stones help with digestion. And then we have an annual subscription to Lisa Coffee's Perfect Balance Club, where you get recipes every week. So to participate, yay, Elisa, thank you for ordering the book. Um, so yeah, guys, you, have a, you don't need to have the book. You just need to um, order the book. And then I'm sure you'll be getting it soon. So from here on, um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. So I want you to interact as much as possible. If there's um, a question, I'll try to reply to it in between the um, give backs giveaway. Michelle, my assistant, is going to be posting the questions on Facebook right below the video. And when you answer the question, please make sure that you use hashtag Happy Belly Book so we can see your replies. And then you can also post the reply at spinach and yoga so I can see it on my page. And we'll try to uh, keep up with all the answers. Uh, make sure to look through my blog to find some of the answers if you don't know them. Google or Mind Body Green articles that I wrote. So I wrote about all of those things. And uh, it should be pretty easy to find the answers. Uh, so for now, if you have any questions or if you'd like me to cover any specific topic, um, please post it in the comments and I'll try to keep track of what's happening. Um, and the first question that I want to ask for the first person who's going to be winning the gift bag is how many bacteria do humans have in the gut? I, I'm sure a lot of you know that uh, healthy bacteria is essential to um, our digestion. Now there's more and more research that's coming up about how bacteria affects everything from our weight to our emotions and of course to the way our stomach feels, whether it's bloated, whether you're eliminating well. So bacteria plays a huge role and in reality there's um, there's pounds and pounds of bacteria in our body, almost in all parts. Um, but digestive tract has the most bacteria. So let's see if you can find the answer about how many different bacteria um, a human gut has. And post your uh, replies right below the video. Please um, use Google, use Mind Body Green to find your answer. And for now, um, while you're looking for answers, and I don't see any questions yet, I wanted to talk a little bit about the book and what the book is about and what the book is not about. And then um, before the next question, in about so we'll announce the winner in about eight minutes. And then after that, uh, we'll try to invite one of the people who's worked with me before and we'll talk about digestion in a dialogue. So one of the things that from the first perspective when you look at the book, it seems that the book is mostly about digestion, um, kind of how to eliminate bloating, what to eat, what not to eat. Um, but from a much bigger perspective, um, 
the book is about how to build a better relationship with your body. And I'm sure that a lot of you know, um, and yesterday at the uh, real book launch, I was giving people a digestion questionnaire. And that digestion questionnaire, besides showing the state of your digestion, also shows what is your relationship with the body? What is the state of that relationship? Um, whether you trust your body enough, whether you're taking care of your body enough, if there's enough commitment in that relationship to actually support each other. And that's what healthy digestion or health in general is about, is whether you can commit enough to feeling good that you're changing your habits and that you're supporting your body on a daily basis. So let me see if you have any questions. Okay, wow. Good, I like this. I like seeing all the answers. So guys, make sure that as I asked in all your questions, hashtag happy belly book, um, and then tag spinach and yoga. So you're not just putting um, the reply, but also putting hashtag happy belly book. Um, okay. So let's see. I see Cassie says, 100 trillion bacteria in a gut, Tisha says, Patricia. And the little soul was the first one to say 100 million. Good job, guys. OK. Sounds good. So, Michelle, please keep track if somebody is posting answers on spinach and yoga page. We want to see that as well. And for now, since most of you don't have um, the book just yet, uh, um, I want to give you a little bit of an overview of what the book covers so you know what to expect when you get the book. So um, in the beginning of the book, I talk about why digestion is a cornerstone of health. And I think most of you know it, that every single cell in your body is determined basically by whether you can digest food well, and whether you can assimilate the nutrients, and if you eliminate all the waste. That's why all those detoxes are so popular, because when you eliminate the waste efficiently, then you are going to be feeling so much better. Good. Thank you, Tisha, for posting Happy Belly Book. So um, a little soul is asking, what do I think of a kukicha tea? As far as I know, kukicha tea is the macrobiotic tea, right? And uh, most of the macrobiotic things are a little bit heating. So uh, when you use something that's heating is going to be good for vata dosha and kapha dosha and in my book I talk quite a bit about different body types and how it can show up in your digestion and what it actually means so it doesn't seem like I'm just speaking random words um, but if you have a pitta imbalance which is any sort of inflammation any sort of heat building up in the body um, IBS microbiotic cuisine can be a little bit heating because there are different um, sauces, lots of spices, um, so spices like ginger or ginseng, those are going to be heating. Brown rice, also going to be heating. Um, lots of so sauces that are used in microbiotic cuisine are not going to be very good for pita type. So uh, to answer your question about kukicha tea, it really depends on your body type and what's happening with your digestion. So if you have um, more tendency towards cold, dry type, let's say vata, then that might be good. If you're leaning more towards pita, um, the type that tends to uh, carry inflammation in the tissue, who tends to get angry when you're stressed out, uh, then kukicha might be a little bit too heating for you. So little so let me know if we answered um, the question. And thank you, Rebecca, for ordering the book. Yay! So I think um, since a little soul was the first to answer um, the question, we'll give the first give back 
to you. So little soul, please send me your uh, mailing address um, in the message to spinach and yoga on the page when once we're done um, with the hangout. And please share the picture of the book and the give back that you get on all social media once you get it. So for now I'm going to try to bring one of the guests live and we'll see if that's going to happen on the Google Hangout. So let's see. Okay. So Eva and Pooja, if uh, you see the invitation, please um, see if you can join it. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about the book. And I'm also going to uh, post the next question. So the next question is, what gemstone helps to heal the gut? And I'll tell you right away the three gemstones that we're talking about. Um, so you can try again, look around the internet, find the gemstones. And this giveaway is sponsored by Soulku Necklaces. I'm going to show you what they look like. Um, hold on. Okie dokie. Okay, so this is how they look. Um, all of those three necklaces, so we can have three winners for this one, and you'll get a gift bag. And besides the gift bag, you'll also get the necklaces. So this is a really good question, and I see Eva is coming up live, so I'm going to put on Eva. Hi, Eva. Hi, Nadia. How are you? Good. Thank you for being here. Of course. My pleasure. So um, you were one of the first people to actually see the full colored copy of the Happy Valley um, at the book launch party yesterday. Uh, what do you think of the book? I love the book. It's amazing. I actually got to read it early, which I'm really happy about. And I love the fact that it combines so many like different ideas and diets and approaches in one book. So it's like really handy to have it right there in front of you and I feel like it's something that I can just always carry with me in case I have any questions. So I definitely love it. Thank you. Um, I know that you shared some of the favorite quotes and some of the favorite ex lear lessons learned from the book. Do you mind sharing uh, a couple now? What were some insights that you got from the book? Yeah, definitely. Um, something that I really like is the whole the way to start is to have a whole vision and have your inspiration of how you want to feel and how you want your body to look like to sort of like guide you um, to live a healthy and happy lifestyle. I feel like before I would rely a lot on my willpower in order for me to kind of go forward and it's a difference between relying on your willpower and being inspired to achieving your goal, which you can always go back to, your inspiration and your vision. And I found this really helpful from the book. Another thing for myself that I really like is the whole idea of mindful eating. I feel like a lot of times when I'm stressed out or in a rush, I don't really pay as much attention to how fast and what I exactly put in my body. So mindful eating has helped me a lot to sort of like calm down and see how I really treat my body and to realize that the quantities of food that I eat um, can be managed in normal proportions instead of um, feeling bloated and heavy after each meal. Uh, yeah, mindful eating is so, so important. And what I notice with mindful eating is that it allows you to constantly observe the way the body is changing and the way its needs are evolving over time. So you're staying a lot more in touch with what you need at any particular moment versus kind of just following a strict regimen of what I should and I shouldn't be eating. 
And as you mentioned, it allows to kind of get a better understanding of the amount of food that your body needs at any given moment. So one day you actually might need a lot more food and then another day you kind of full after just half the portion of what you usually need. So it, it, mindfulness really helps to stay in touch with that. And there's a huge portion um, of the book is about mindful eating. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that wisdom. Yeah, of course. So tell me um, out of, and you've been on a journey of kind of making your belly happy and finding a, more about your body. Um, what is working really well for your body and your stomach now? So definitely more simple foods. Uh, food combinations was another big topic and food sensitivities in the Happy Belly book. So right now I really try to pay attention to the foods that I eat and the way I combine them and usually include more veggies and fruits veggies in each meal and have less, let's say, grains. Um, so it helps my digestion because I'm like a pita kapha. Mm -hmm. um, something else that really helped me is to understand like certain foods and how they affect my body. I believe I spoke to you about this, about the tomatoes and eggplants, and I never really paid attention to how they really make my body feel very fiery and have the tendency of like breaking out. So experimenting with different foods and seeing how they affect my body and just kind of like avoiding them or taking them in the smaller quantities has really helped me function better and also have a better skin which is what really drove me into trying out all of these like different methods. Um, something else for me, I try to cut off sugar a lot because I see that it also affects my body and how if I break out or not, um, so sugar has been a big um, no, no, you no, know, no for me, yeah. <laughs> and I agree with with you about sugar. I think um, sugar can be quite addictive, and it helps to um, to actually proliferate the growth of bacteria that's not so good for our gut. And as you guys um, answered the previous question, that. 100 trillion bacteria that's in the body, you really want to make sure that you have the right type of bacteria because it can easily take over your entire physique. Um, so yeah, sugar is a big one. Well, is there uh, something that Eva, you would let people, kind of like an advice of somebody who is just starting and they feel very frustrated with their body, specifically in terms of how their stomach reacts to the food, something that you would give like, as a first step, as a guidance? My advice is be patient. <laughs> and mm -hmm. this is the advice I give myself every day. Uh, sometimes I want to see changes right away. But I feel like it's been a journey and I have seen huge improvements. And of course, thanks to your help, Nadia. Thank you. And my biggest challenge, yet learning lesson, has been to be patient and kind of like enjoy the process in the meantime. I like that. Enjoy the process. <laughs> yes, and just be open to experimenting and trying out different things. Just because it's something works for somebody does not always mean it's going to work for you, but just being open to try it out and see how you react to it. And yeah. if not, something else. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Pa patience is a huge one. Uh, well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, of course. Thank you. Yeah, and let's guys, um, let's get back to Okay, so Okay, so let's get back to the questions. I have some answers for you and let's see if you got some answers for me. So, make sure that you tag all responses Happy Belly Book. Um Okay, so so the answers that we have from soul cool necklaces is amethyst, amazonite, and garnet. So those were the answers that we're looking for. So Michelle, um, let's see if we um, have somebody who listed those stones. I see a got, obsidian. You guys know lots of stones. 
um, Adrene. Okay. Interesting. Um, so let's. I guess I don't see anyone listing the stones that Soku necklaces listed. So I'm just gonna choose randomly three people who is gonna who, who gonna get the gift bag. Um, so I'm just gonna choose three people who replied first to the question, and that's Tisha, Patricia, and Brian Grogan. Okay. So guys, Brianne, Patricia, and Tisha, make sure to send a message to um, Spinach and Yoga directly, and uh, I'll hook you up with Solku, and you'll also get the get uh, the gift bag. Uh, and we have a question here: How do I eat if I have a vata dosha, but I have equal imbalance of pita and kapha? Um, so Patricia, it's uh, hard to give um, advice just based on your understanding of the dosha imbalance that you have because it might be correct, it might not be correct. So I would say that it really helps to have um, guidance from an experienced practitioner. So I would be careful giving guidelines just based on um, Facebook discussion. I, but I can share some general rules which would be both all all three doshas, they are foods that are tri doshas that are going to be good for all dosha types. Um, so you can always use um, healing, nourishing, easy to digest soups. Let's say zucchini soup, um, asparagus and daikon blended soup, cauliflower soup with hemp seeds, uh, blended broccoli and arugula and a little bit zucchini. Um, add some good quality fats to your soups, whether it's coconut oil or ghee or olive oil. Uh, you could also use hemp seeds because they're the easiest to digest if you can, if you don't have sensitivity to them. Um, and then make sure that you have based on. So if you have a vata imbalance uh, mostly, but you feel that your pita and kapha also can show up, then make sure that your meals don't aggravate any of the doshas. So Keep them on the blender side, nothing too spicy, nothing too sour. So don't add too many chilies, don't add too much lemon, go for lime instead. Um, and don't choose foods that are heavy to digest. So all three doshas are going to be aggravated by um, lots of drying foods, lots of stale foods. So something that's been in the fridge for three days is going to aggravate all three doshas. Um, so choose fresh, easy to digest preferably foods on the liquidy side. So those are going to be mostly warm soups. And try to avoid poorly combined foods. So poorly combined foods, again, are going to imbalance all three doshas. Um, easily digestible, fresh food is going to be good for all doshas. Most doshas really benefit from all kinds of vegetables. So cabbage family might be a little bit harsh on vata digestive system. So um, like Brussels sprouts would probably be a little bit too difficult to digest. But at the same time, if you blend cauliflower and you blend broccoli, those are going to be really easy to digest on basically any digestive system. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully <clears throat> this is helpful. And I also have a class on Spreecast that's about um, easy to digest meals and how to use meal formulas versus using recipes. And if you go to Spreecast and just search for healthy, quick meal formulas, you'll be able to find the class. It's an hour-long class, and you can watch it for free. And that's going to give you some ideas in terms of how to cook for your body. So hopefully, Patricia, I um, answered your question. And before we move on, Alicia is reminding about a, an amazing um, contest that we have going on, and I hope uh, all of you can participate. I know Brianne uh, is already participating. She posted a picture of her happy belly. So the contest that we're holding is um, for a woman to, to win 
a three-day retreat with me in Miami. It's going to be a Happy Belly Detox, um, where you're basically nourished with the most amazing, easy-to-digest foods. Um, you have as much time as you want with me to chat about digestion, to figure out what works the best for your body. Uh, you'll also get <clears throat> daily massages. You'll learn how to cook for your body. And this is an all expenses paid trip. So what you need to do to win this trip, you need to take a picture of your happy belly and post it on Facebook and Instagram, hashtag happy belly book, and get as many people to like that picture as possible. We're going to choose one winner based on the amount of likes that their picture has. So get all of your friends to support you. And I know that can be a challenge because it's an exercise in self-compassion and self-acceptance, but this is the whole point. We want you to look at the body, not saying, well, I hate my stomach so I can't take a picture of it, but actually see if you can treat it with a little bit more um, compassion, a little bit more love. And that's going to be a good emotional exercise even if you don't win. So um, I, I'm really excited to see your pictures on Facebook. And there are lots of wonderful pictures already. Um, and to read all the details, you can go at spinach and yoga slash happy belly or just read Alicia's comment. Uh, so the next question that we have for the next, uh, the next gift bag is what three Ayurvedic herbs can help digestion. So you need to, um, again, herbs, you can choose some spices. I wrote about it quite a bit on my website, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Um, and again, hashtag Happy Belly Book and post it in the comments below. Okay. And while we're here, I wanted um, to talk a little bit about cooking and then we'll see if we can invite another guest. Um, so I know that a lot of women struggle with deciding what they're going to eat on a day-to-day -day basis. What do I choose for breakfast? What do I choose for lunch? What do I choose for dinner? Uh, so I wanted to just give you an idea of what I choose and I hope that's going to be helpful because um, my digestion is still pretty sensitive, so I tend to lean towards the easiest to digest foods in general. And for somebody who is on the road of healing their digestion and they're just starting out, that might be a good starting point. And whatever diet you choose, um, I talk a little bit about it in the book and all the free downloads that you get when you forward your receipt at Gifts and Spinach and Yoga. Um, there's also a cookbook, there's a toolkit that has a lot more recipes, so you can always choose recipes from there. But to just give you a general guideline, um, I would recommend starting the day with something liquid and then having something solid and the hardest to digest food for lunch and then again having something liquid for dinner. And let's just um, do a, kind of a sample of what that would look like. So a liquid, easy to digest meal for breakfast can be um, a boosted hemp milk. So it can be uh, hemp milk with some spices, uh, soaked goji berries or soaked figs. Um, you can add a little bit of either, if you want a little bit thicker, you can use coconut or almond additionally to that. Um, and then if you're using protein powder, then I would recommend a single source. So there's not a lot of ingredients, either uh, pea protein, which is my preference, or brown rice powder. So you're not using a powder that has a ton of ingredients. You're using something that's a lot less simpler. And one of the things that we're giving in the gift bag is actually going to be um, the powder by Plant Fusion. So this one I find one of the easiest to digest. And it has... Um, it has pea protein powder as its main source, and then it has a little bit of quinoa uh, protein powder. So I think that one is the easiest to digest, in my opinion, and that's compared to 
all other vegan and raw protein powders. So this one is a, a lot less irritating. Um, another liquidy meal for breakfast can be chia pudding. And again, don't be afraid of good quality fats because that's going to keep your digestion stable, blood, um, blood sugar level stable. You can have chia pudding with um, almond milk or hemp milk. And then add a little bit of coconut oil to it. Another liquid meal, and that's one of my favorites, is green soup. Make green soup and then have it either with a couple of quail eggs or you can add, again, hemp seeds for some protein. Or another thing that um, really is really grounding is um, to add really small fish. So we're not talking about tuna fish, um, but more like sardines because those are really easy to digest. They're very small bone fish. They don't carry a lot of heavy metals in them. Um, and for women in general, that fish is considered much healthier. So that can be your breakfast. And then for dinner, for lunch, you can have something a little bit heartier, something a little bit harder to digest, which can be, um, think of a plate and then visualize how the plate is going to be all kinds of vegetables. So. You can have your butternut squash, carrots, uh, some maybe sautéed zucchini, some kale, asparagus, daikon. Taro root is a great vegetable to pull out toxins from your colon. Um, so that's half of your plate. Then a quarter of your plate is some sort of a protein, which can be beans, it can be uh, smaller lentils if your digestion is a little bit weaker. It can be bean soup or a lentil soup. It can be a piece of fish if you're eating fish. Uh, or if you're eating other animal sources of animal protein, again, that can be that choice of protein. Um, and then, so visualize the relationship. You're never going to have fish with a little bit of veggies. It's always the opposite. It's veggies with a little bit of fish. So you're having about a quarter of a plate of protein and then half of the plate are vegetables. That visually makes a big difference. So you're not overloading your body with too much animal protein that it it, it just won't absorb it um, and it will make you tired because animal protein, while it can be good for you, it is a little bit harder to digest. And then another quarter of the plate will be some sort of a um, carbs with a little bit of fat. You can have um, some sort of a grain, if you're okay with grains. Um, you can have more carb starchy vegetables. It can be a sweet potato or butternut squash or maybe a piece of sprouted bread. So something that's not aggravating your digestive system but will keep you full longer. And the idea is to have a big lunch because um, your digestion is the strongest so you're going to be absorbing most of the nutrients then. Um, but it will also make you a lot less hungry for dinner uh, or a lot less hungry for a snack later on. So that just um, kind of making making sure that whatever you eat during lunchtime, you're going to be able to digest and break down before you go to rest. And then dinner is, again, is something super light. And that's, um, I wouldn't recommend having animal protein for dinner. Um, I would stay more towards lighter soups. Um, you can have, there are some amazing bread like Lydia's Organic that has amazing uh, sprouted raw breads that are really easy to digest. Um, and then you can have some side of sautéed vegetables. So if you're used to chewing something, have like lots of different vegetables. Make a roasted vegetable salad. Uh, make a massaged kale salad. Um, or you can make a smoothie. So some days maybe it would be good to let your digestion rest and make uh, just a fruit smoothie. So, or an almond milk. So those are the options to kind of go into the night making sure that your digestion is not working and your body can actually keep up with internal stuff like maintenance and detoxification process. So when you think of a spring detox, it might not be that you're eating only juices or smoothies. It might be that you're just choosing to have lighter dinner and that's your detox for a few weeks. And that's going to be very effective. So from here on, let's see what answers you have. Okay, so I see so many of you replying. Um, Trifola, Amalaki, um, 
Trifala ginger turmeric, uh, ginger fennel seeds, burdock, turmeric, um, Trifala ginger turmeric. Okay, so I was asking for three different herbs. So let's see who was the first one to answer. Okay, so I Luliana Alexandru uh, from Alternative Medicine College of Canada. Okay, Luliana, so um, you are correct. Uh, those are definitely three of the herbs that will help digestion, and you were the first one to answer. Um, so please send um, send your mailing address to Spinach and Yoga, and we'll mail you the gift. Okay, so let's see if we can bring on the next guest. And before we do that, I'm going to ask you the next question. What are five food combinations that are a no-no if you want to avoid bloating, constipation, and feeling heavy after meals? Again, there's tons of information on the website. There's also some of my articles on um, mind body greens. So you can find the answers easily while I try to bring on another guest. Okay, Pooja, so we're going to try to add you in. Okay. Okay, so let's see if you get the invitation. And you guys, um, try, if you have any other questions about the book, um, please post it in the comments as well. I would love to hear from you. And let's see if Pooja can join us. Okay. And make sure that you don't forget after the virtual book launch party to share some pictures of your belly if you want to win the trip with me. And Okay, so I don't see that Pooja is able to join, unfortunately. So we'll just keep talking. So um, I want to talk a little bit about ways to change habits. And I talk about it in the book because the book is basically built um, not as a to-do list. It's, it describes uh, some of the bad habits that are socially accepted in a society and then also ways that we can change it. So I'll just give you some ideas of the bad eating habits that I'm discussing and that's why there's a question about food combining because it is actually one of the habits that appeared very recently in a modern society. Um, so while you choose all the um, bad food um, combinations, so guys I need five five bad food combinations. So list all five. I can give you one example that you can copy is having fruit after a meal. That's an example of a bad food combination. Um, so some of the bad habits that I'm discussing in the book is eating too fast. So a lot of us eat way too fast and as a result we forget to chew. It puts the body in a very stressed out mode and um, our digestion can, just can't work properly in that rate. Um, so one of the habits that a lot of the women need to work on is slowing down and getting into the state of actually receiving the nutri nutrients, receiving the nourishment when they're eating. Because um, a lot of women who are busy moms, who are running around the whole day, for them, eating is just another checklist, another check mark that they kind of have to do um, and get it over with. Um, I would like you to start thinking about eating as a time to really slow down and receive. Focus on being in this state of openness where your body will absorb all the nutrients. And if you want, there's even a technique where you can kind of visualize what you want to receive through that food. So put in the intention of how you would like to feel after a meal, and then imagine that that's what the food is giving you. 
Um, another bad habit is eating with your computer, eating with your phone, um, or um, doing something else, multitasking while you're eating. So this one is, again, it's a matter of practicing mindfulness and using a um, single task um, as a focus. And that can be very tricky because that puts you in a position where you have to observe your urges, the urge to be productive and check your emails, check your phone, um, kind of be engaged in the outside world instead of just being with your food. And it creates a lot of emotions that will come up when you start practicing it. But it's something that can be a very transformational. And it's a matter of letting go of this desire to be productive because in reality you're not really accomplishing anything by browsing through your email and Facebook while you're eating. Um, it's just an illusion that you choose to create for yourself. Um, and focusing a lot more in the state of okay, now is the time when I'm taking care of the body and this is the only task I have at hand. And the reason is because you're important enough and you're significant enough to actually nourish yourself because you're able to be the best version of yourself only when you are well taken care of and nourished. So let's see what um, answers you're giving. Um, fruit with a meal, cold water after a meal, proteins and starch to concentrate proteins, banana and milk. Wow, look at that. Good one, Casey. Um, and then I'm looking for more answers. So you guys, if you want to post one, let me know. And I uh, have a question from Tisha. Do you recommend more grains or grounding vegetables than one-fourth of a plate for vata dosha? Um, so Tisha, that's a, that's a good question. I would say it depends on what kind of a vata imbalance do you have. What I noticed in myself and a lot of my clients is a lot of people have a vata imbalance in their mind, not in their body. And let me explain what I mean. A vata imbalance in the body is going to show up as cracking joints, weight loss, exhaustion, uh, lots of bloating, um, constipation, so lots of dryness, coldness, and exhaustion. Vata can show up in a mental space or in your mind as um, hyperactivity, the urge to multitask, anxiety, fear, a feeling of ungroundedness and instability, um, and lots of emotional, emotional eating stuff. So it's going to be kind of like, I need food to ground, I need food to feel good. Um, so if you have lots of vata in your physical body, I would recommend that having more than one quarter of a plate grounding vegetables or grains and then making sure you have enough good quality fats. If you have vata, on the other hand, mostly in the mental space, then the food is not going to address it as well. And that's really, really important to understand. You cannot address the emotional and mental stuff purely with food. Um, you need to add um, other components that will balance fata as well, which one of the most balancing things is going to be a warm oil massage. And that's one of the hardest habits to build for some women, but in reality it takes five minutes. Just put some warm oil on yourself and have a t-shirt that you don't feel bad about, uh, that it's going to smell like oil. Um, and walk around in oil for five minutes. And then another thing that would be balancing for vata is having some sort of a quiet meditation time or relaxation time all the, like most days. And it might be good to have it first thing in the morning. Like have it while you drink your tea. 
have a cup of tea, and then just sit for five minutes. You don't have to do any practice, just observe your breath. Just let that openness and stillness become a part of your life because vata in general are very erratic. They're all over the place. Um, and you want to balance it out with stillness and softness and warmth. Um, vata can be balanced with good music, um, with slow types of yoga. Um, so those would all be necessary if you feel that your vata is mostly imbalanced on the mind aspect. So Tisha, I hope you, I answered the question. Um, I see Lauren. Lauren, I love your belly. Um, so thank you for sharing it. Uh, please guys, post pictures of your happy belly, the same as Lauren, um, who is saying that Please like my happy belly so I can learn from Nadia one-on-one -on -one in Miami. Uh, and Brianne is asking, Kelly, can you clarify the best oils for the Vata balancing massage? So for the Vata balancing massage, sesame oil is really good. Almond oil can work. Um, Banyan Botanicals has really good um, Vata oil massage. And most Ayurvedic other stores will have a Vata balancing massage, which will be will have additional herbs. Basically, what sesame oil does is um, it, it's very penetrating, so it allows herbs that are in the oil to penetrate deeper into the tissues. Um, another option that you can use is um, at, at take regular sesame oil and just add a couple of drops of essential oil. You can add a couple of drops of... Uh, let's say lavender oil if you're going to sleep or a couple of oils of grapefruit if you're doing it in the morning and those would be balancing as well. So I hope, hope Brianne, I answered your question. Okay, so let's get to the um, answer. And um, Casey, oh, Casey Lees was the first one to um, list five different combinations that are bad for your digestion. So Casey, please uh, send a message to spinachinyoga.com so we can mail you your gift bag. Okay, so let's get to the next. Um, let's get to the next uh, question, and I still don't see Pooja. But Pooja, if you get the invitation um, and you can join us, I would love to chat you and to introduce you to everyone. Okay, so. Let me open the questions. Okay. Um, name five happy belly foods, foods that will help regularity and prevent bloating. Okay, so I'll repeat it again. Name five happy belly foods. So that would be foods that help to, pre uh, to help regularity and reduce bloating and to give you... Um, kind of a where to look for, look for the article on Mind Body Green. Okay. And um, the winner of this question, besides the gift bag, will also get an annual subscription to the um, Perfect Balance Club with Lisa Coffee, which is the annual subscription, I think it's around um, $119. So, I'm looking for your answers. Don't forget to hashtag Happy Belly. Um, okay, I see that there's some questions. So, Patty is asking, what are grounding vegetables? Hi, Patty, you're welcome. Um, so, grounding vegetables, it's very easy. Don't, don't think of it as you have to remember them. Um, it's actually vegetables that grow in the ground. Uh, so all the root vegetables are going to be grounding. So think uh, beets, uh, parsnip, sweet potatoes, all of those are going to be really grounding. You can have all kinds of beets, for example. There's yellow beets, um, there are red beets, and then from there on, all the same with sweet potatoes. There's purple sweet potato, red sweet potato, there's yams. Uh, so you have all those grounding vegetables that are on the sweeter side. 
carrots are also going to be grounding. And then there are vegetables that grow right on top of the ground. So they're actually touching the ground. And those would be squashes because, you know, they're really heavy. So when they're growing in nature, they're actually lying down on the ground. The plant is not holding them up. So butternut squash, spaghetti squash, uh, pumpkins, those are all going to be really grounding. So hopefully um, Isabella and Patty that I answered your question. Okay, so while we have another 10 minutes before you um, give me an answer, I want to keep going about the habits and let's talk a little bit more about them. Um, and then after that, I wanted to talk a little bit about dairy because dairy seems like it's a big, big issue for a lot of you. So we spoke a little bit about food combining, which is kind of a habit of what you put on a plate. And um, I would say that most people, even uh, people who are very health conscious, they still have this habit of combining food improperly. So in the past question, you gave me some of the answers of what are improperly combined foods, and I want to expand a little bit on that. In general, as a good eating habit, I would say your meal shouldn't contain more than five ingredients. I'm not talking about spices, I'm talking about the real real ingredients uh, from different food groups. So if you're having, for example, um, vegetables, choose three, like choose the ones that you like the most and then choose one source of protein and one source of um, carbs, whatever you're having. Um, and that's going to give you five ingredients. Um, and then yeah, feel free to use whatever spices and herbs that you need. But in general, if you add um, more ingredients, you you're making it harder for your body to digest. And some of the ingredients, I'm sure you probably know, um, but some of the worst combined meals would be sandwiches. It's, it's a big no-no for anyone who wants a healthy digestion. Um, and the reason is that sandwiches combine usually three of the most harder to digest foods, which is bread. And let's look at bread not from the perspective that our ancestors is, but actually in the reality of what is in the store. Most bread has sugar in it, it has yeast in it, most of it has additional gluten in it, it has soy products in it. Um, so it's, it's basically a bunch of unnecessary empty calories and then it's dry or worse, it might be toasted. So it's again, it's really dry so your body needs to spend a lot of energy to rehydrate the bread and to break down all of those um, things that the bread is made of, usually something that can easily trigger a food sensitivity. So when you think of gluten, most people when they have a gluten sensitivity, it starts with hard to digest foods, with overloading digestion, with too many hard to digest foods. There are very few people who eat gluten as only in wheat berries, like a wheat berry salad, and that's their only source of gluten. Most people eat gluten in a very processed way, so bread would be one of them. Um, and then most sandwiches also have cheese and some sort of an annual protein added to it. Um, so again, cheese is not all created equal. And when you do have cheese, it makes it so much easier when you mix it just raw cheese, whether it's sheep's cheese or goat cheese, and have it with some bitter greens. Bitter greens help to produce bile, help to break down fats, and it's an easily combined meal. So you can have a piece of sheep's cheese on top of a bed of sautéed greens, or broccoli rub, for example. Um, but when you have a piece of processed cheese on top of a piece of processed bread and then on top you get a piece of processed meat, um, you're asking for disaster. You are asking for disaster. So I would say if one of the first things that you can do to improve your digestion is to stop eating sandwiches, period, um, and then go more for foods that you can actually need to eat with a fork and a knife or a spoon. So soups always, always are good. 
Um, and another thing is um, that a lot of people uh, can easily combine lots of weird stuff with is Mexican food. So if you think about the Mexican restaurant, it's one of the harder to digest uh, meals for most people. And the reason is that it mixes beans that a lot of people have a hard time digesting to begin with, with cheese. Again, let's talk about processed, um, factory-created cheese, right? Uh, sour cream, that's, um, that's a whole different story. I, it, again, usually not very good quality. Uh, mixed with guacamole, so it's fat on top of fat on top of fat. Uh, usually comes with some salt and spicy sauce, which can be irritating for the digestion. Um, comes on with a corn t tortilla or with corn chips, and most people are allergic to corn. Um, and then you have some sort of a meat with it. Uh, so again, if whether it's chicken or um, chicken or steak or whatever you choose as the sort of your meat, you're combining two different proteins. It's beans and meat. Um, so that's going to make it very difficult for the stomach to digest. And this meal is probably not going to be digested within 8 to 10 hours. So um, I would keep those kind of meals very, very rare in a diet, if at all. And then if you do, then choose one sort of one source of fat and one source of protein. That would be, for example, if you're having um, a burrito, you would have it with a little bit of rice, grilled vegetables, a little bit of guacamole, um, and beans, for example, or guacamole, um, rice, and a little bit of chicken. So you're not combining cheese, sour cream, and guacamole as three different sources of fat. So hopefully that's helpful and let's see what we have for answers for the next question and then we'll actually try to bring another guest. Okay, so let's see. Lisa says, red lentil soup, berries, steamed veggies, vegetable soups, water. Love that. Um, and actually, Alicia was the first one out of people who didn't get a gift yet to respond to this question. A little soul replied, butternut squash, lentils, garlic, hemp seeds, olive oil, ghee, turmeric, ginger. Love it, little soul. Um, Kelsey, thank you, Kelsey. Okay, so um, Alicia, we're shipping the bag to you. Um, please send uh, your mailing address to the happy uh, to the spinach and yoga uh, message box. Okay, Don, I'm hearing myself. Okay, I think we have Pooja on. Um, hold on, I'm gonna mute you for a second, and. Um, we also have a question from Casey. How can I figure out my own dosha and imbalances? Well, Casey, that's um, you're gonna have. Um, I talk. I do talk about it quite a bit in the book. But the best way and the safest way would be to probably go to an Ayurvedic practitioner. Um, if you want to save money, then I would go to the website. It's called. Um, it's actually also in the book. Um, can't remember it now, but if you Google for an Ayurvedic dosha test, um, the website. Okay, so the website is going to be called Holistic Online. So, um, at the Holistic Online, they have probably one of the most comprehensive Ayurvedic tests. It's about 200 questions, um, and then they will give you a percentage of different doshas. But again, it's just an approximation, and nobody really will be able to tell as much as an Ayurvedic practitioner. So it helps to understand different doshas and to understand how they can show up in the body type, um, but without necessarily diagnosing yourself because. When we are slightly imbalanced, it's really easy to misinterpret the imbalance for something else. So it really helps to work with someone versus to self-diagnose. So the last question that I have for you guys 
Um, and I kind of already answered that question. So let's rephrase it. What time of the day should you have... Uh, actually, I answered that question already too. Let's say this way. How many times a day should you ideally eat for a healthy digestion? There you go. So don't forget to hashtag Happy Belly. Okay, Shane, I'm, I'm happy that you were at the book launch. Okay, so let's see if we can bring in Pooja. Okay, Pooja, can you say something? Hold on, we can't hear you. Okay, try to say something. Hmm. Doesn't sound look like your sound is on. Do you want to check see if the sound is on? No, can't hear you. Hold on. Let me disconnect you and then we'll connect you again. Okay. And we'll try to add you in again. So Pooja is one of the people who took um, a six weeks Happy Belly course. It was a video course um, a little bit over a year ago. And that was actually the course that served as the basis for the book. Uh, so Pooja, one of the first people that I worked with, and she, um, she even came to New York afterwards to study yoga and work with my meditation teacher. So she has an incredible story to share, and I really wanted you guys to meet her. Um, so let's let's give her a minute and see if we can actually connect with her. Pooja is also very much into Ayurveda, and she would be an incredible example of um, how Ayurveda has actually worked for her. Um, okay. So we're waiting for a little bit longer. And I'm still waiting for your answers in terms of um, what would be the ideal number of times that you would eat if you have um, some sort of an issue with digestion. And I can tell you right away, there's a trick in this question. It's a tricky question. It's not as easy as you think. Okay, so let's see. Um, unfortunately, I don't see Pooja. Um, for some reason, I'm not able to connect her. So let's um, let's talk a little bit more about a couple more um, bad food combinations. I feel like it's almost never too many times that I can remind you about them because just eliminating bad food combinations from your diet can make such a big difference. So um, besides eating uh, Mexican food. Another bad food combination can be having fruit for dessert. Like when you go and they're thinking that fruit is the healthiest dessert, well think about it twice because when you have fruit, something that's really easy, very quick to digest, and you use it um, right after a heavier meal, it's going to sit on top of it and just ferment. 
So having food after a meal is going to probably lead to bloating. Um, another combination of food that's not that good is mixing yogurt with fruit or ice cream with fruit. Um, so if you're having ice cream, have it with caramel sauce, uh, like good quality um, caramel that may be made with coconut sugar um, or a little bit of golf syrup or add some honey. Um, but try not to have it with berries or some sort of a fruit or fruit flavored ice, ice cream. Um, bananas and milk. Do not mix bananas and milk unless you're really vata and you want some mucus and additional heaviness. Um, don't mix those two. Just add some spices to milk. Um, if you're having almond milk, add some lokuma powder and that's it. That's, that's like add some cocoa powder or carob powder and have it as a hot chocolate. Or if you're having fruit, just have some fruit. Um, and you can mix a little bit of avocado to them, for example. Um, but try not to mix milk and bananas. Um, and a couple more things that I wanted to tell you about, which is related to the question that I'm about, um, that I was asking. Uh, so let's see what we have in terms of uh, replies. Okay. Um, okay. So we have some. Some people say four to five times, um, three times with a minimum three-hour break between meals. Says Natalia, five meals, not counting tea and water. Angelina says five times. And look at what Eva says. Depending on your dosha type, your current situation, from one to three times a day, go through an easy detox first, then adjust your diet and meals per day based on how we feel. So, and yes, Eva, Eva is the most right. Um, the answer is, it depends. There's really no exact number that can fit for every person. And that's something that Ayurveda and mindful eating is so about. There's no one, there's, you can't say that everyone has to eat three times a day. Let's look at, for example, at three different people, right? Somebody who's a vata type and their digestion is interchangeable. It's on the weaker side. They love to move around. They're active. Um, but if they eat only three heavy meals per day, they're going to feel tired after each big meal. Um, and then their blood sugar level is not going to be very stable after all the activity that they put themselves through. So vata types would need to eat more to like a four times per day. Um, or maybe even five, depending on their level of physical activity. But out of those five meals, you would have maybe three solid meals and then three, two liquid meals. So you can have normal breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but in between have a snack of almond milk or have some um, blended hemp seeds or have some um, blended either um, acai berries or maybe a chia pudding. So you're not getting your stomach to work really hard in between meals. And the idea is, as some of you mentioned, is not to put food on top of already pre-digested food because that's going to ferment. Let's look at pita types. Pita types can digest usually really well. Um, and they can. pita types are the ones who will get hangry. They're, they will get angry if they're hungry. So pita types actually need some sort of a cooling sweeter liquid like coconut water or coconut milk. Again, in between meals to kind of support their um, agony, their digestive system at an even level. Um, does mean that they should be eating and grazing all the time. So grazing is probably one of the worst things you can do for your digestion. But they do need uh, to make sure that th their fire doesn't get too strong and doesn't overwhelm them to the point where they're just starving for food and angrily looking um, through their apartment. Um, Kapha types, on the other hand, their digestion is slower, their metabolism is slower, 
and they do quite well on three meals or less. So a lot of them, according to jo Dr. John Duyard, will actually do quite well on two meals per day. And that's a part of kaffas really love food. It does make them feel good, but they really love food. So here you would make sure that those two meals that you have are amazing, fulfilling, and nourishing. Um, and that the portions are not too big, which means you have to slow down to really savor each bite. Um, and that's why understanding the type of constitution that you have and the way you want to feel really helps in determining what kind of um, diet on a day-to-day -day basis you're going to have. And then once you choose what fits you best, you kind of stick with it. So if you're a very strong vatted person, you can have three meals and three liquid snacks. If you're a coffee type, you choose to have two or three meals per day, and that's it. And that's what you stick with. Because once you find what works for your body, it's good if you can establish a routine based on that, because that's going to keep your mental vata in check. And um, since Eva was the closest to answer the um, answer, Eva, you're going to be getting the gift bag. Uh, and Patricia is asking, what can I combine fruit with um, almond milk or hemp milk? So Patricia, in general, it's not recommended to combine fruit with anything, especially fats. And the reason is that fruit digests quick, fat digests very, very slowly. Um, and if you mix them together, it can be a little bit confusing to the body. But again, food combining is not something that you have to follow very strictly unless you are very sensitive or you have candida problems, which in that case it might be necessary to follow the diet quite strictly. But if your digestion is quite strong, it might be okay to mix um, fruit with either almond milk or hemp milk. Um, but in reality, an ideal case scenario, I just wouldn't. Like, I never mix fruit with anything. Um, you can f have fruit first and then have your hemp milk or almond milk. So that's the way I would go about it. And sometimes it's not as pleasant. Sometimes I have to tell you something that's not fun to hear. But believe me, I'm doing it for your best interest, for the, be for the best interest of your belly and your digestion. Uh, because if you think about it, um, what I like to think or imagine when I feel like something is being taken away from me or a restriction is being put on me is think of your ancestors. Can you imagine um, a few thousand years ago, can you imagine somebody running around searching first for almonds, breaking each almond, making almond milk, that probably take, would take half a day already, um, and then going to search for some berries to make a smoothie. That probably wouldn't be happening. You just, you never, our ancestors never ate too many nuts at a time because they're really hard to get. Um, they never bought nuts that are not shelled. Um, so if you buy nuts, buy the freshest shelled nuts and don't have more than just a few at a time because you wouldn't be able to get that many opened at once. So our system was never able to digest a whole pack of almonds on its own. Um, and same with berries or fruit. Have them in season. Don't have too much fruit because, again, it's not something that's natural for the, for the body. Um, um, just because fruit is it's an amazing gift from nature, but there was never too much of it. And it was mostly in the summer and fall. So spring and winter, we do better without having too much heavy tastes, um, too much sweetness. Uh, so fruit, enjoy it on its own. Maybe add some mint to it or some ginger to it, like make watermelon, ginger, and mint smoothie. So keeping things simple really helps digestion. Okay, so Eva gets the last gift bag. And before we finish up, I want to remind you again, guys, make sure to post pictures of your happy belly if you want to come with me to Miami. We'll choose the winner tomorrow by midnight Pacific time. Please share with all your friends so they like your picture because the picture with the most likes is going to be the one that wins. Um, and also, I want to ask you for a huge favor. I want to know 
how else besides the book, besides giving you all those downloads, in what way I can be helpful um, so it's easier for you to move forward in terms of improving your digestion and improving your health. You can send me an email at nadia at spinachandyoga.com and just share your ideas. What would you like um, to be receiving? What kind of programs would you like me to create? Would you be more interested in doing an online program um, or would be like an urban retreat or a tasting event in New York? Um, or are you just happy with having some blog posts and that's enough for you? I, I would really like to know what is it that you need so I know how to support you best. And to just let you know, we do have um, a couple of things coming up in New York. So if you're in New York on April 9th, we have an amazing sacred foods event coming up and that's going to be all about what foods serve your body best in the spring, what tastes to focus on to lighten up. So spring is a natural detoxification period, the time where we let go of all the heavy winter weight, um, of all the mucus, and kind of jump start our metabolism, lose a little bit of weight if it's necessary. So that's what the tasting is going to be about, and you can find out all about it at spinach and yoga slash events. And there's also a six weeks online program called Happy Belly that's going to be coming up. And... Um, it, there's also a lot of information about it on spinach and yoga slash events, but I will be posting more and more about it on my newsletter to let you know exactly what we're going to be doing each week and what the, po the program entails. But I would love to hear from you um, at Nadia at spinach and yoga so you can tell me what else would you want so I can support you better. And... Um, there's one more question from Natalia. How do you usually keep your diet during traveling, for example, in Italy? Did you avoid any food or was it was about wine? Thank you. So Natalia, um, I'm usually, I'm a, I, I don't know if I'm an easy traveler, but I usually stick to pretty much the same food. I eat soups everywhere, so um, while I was in Italy, I promised all of you on Facebook that there will be no restrictions. So if I want bread, I'll eat bread. If I want ice cream, I'll eat ice cream. Um, and I was just kind of listening to my body and paying attention to what I wanted. So in about two weeks, a little bit over two weeks, I had gelato three times and that felt fine. Um, I never wanted bread, so I never had bread. I never wanted pasta or pizza, so I never had those. Um, but I had a lot of soups. Um, and Italian soups actually amazing, much better than Italian version soups in the US. Um, and I had lots of vegetables because the vegetables, lots of them are farm to table, very fresh. Um, and my body seems to do quite well with lots of vegetables, a little bit of fish and a little bit of dairy. So that's kind of how I travel. <laughs> Flexible, but most of the time very, um, very mindful. So I never would do or eat something just because it's there and it's a custom to do it. So in Italy, um, like I, I never felt that I needed to have pasta just because it's a country where everyone eats pasta because I don't like pasta. Um, and that's a, that's a very important issue that comes up is are you following customs and traditions just because they're custom and traditions and everyone else is doing it around you? or is it something that you actually want to be doing? So for example, with dinner, um, I like to have my dinner at 5 p.m. Or, or 6 p.m. at the latest. Um, and that's what my body likes. I don't care if people want to eat at 9.30. I'll go to dinner, but I'm not going to eat there. Um, and that's what works for my body. So it's, do you have enough commitment and respect in that relationship? to do what feels best, what serves you best, and not to follow um, the social, socially accepted rules or customs. So that's what it comes down to. So guys, I hope that you enjoy the Happy Belly book. Uh, please share your Happy Belly pictures on Spinach and Yoga page and on your um, Facebook and Instagram. And stay in touch. Uh, make sure that you share pictures with your happy belly and post uh, reviews on Amazon. Thank you so much for being with us today.